Guillermo Lorca, welcome to the Undraped Artist Podcast. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me, Jeff. Um, so nice to so nice to meet you finally. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's it's my pleasure. So I've been following you for a while, and uh, I got to tell you, I'm mind blown because and I was just looking at your website before, probably for the first time actually, because I followed you on Instagram. And you know, websites, no one looks at websites anymore. So I, I go into your website and looking yeah. at your bio a little bit, and I went clear back to 2011 and your early work. And I was just totally mind blown that you were doing huge, ambitious work right out of the gate. You know, most of mm -hmm. us start with oh, yeah. small stuff and kind mm -hmm. of insignificant studies. But from what I can tell is you finished school sometime around 2006 and then you already by 2011, you're doing these huge complex paintings, mm -hmm. which I, oh. blows my mind. Oh yeah, that, that's true. I, actually, um, at some point of my, when, I, when I'm trying to, to learn how to paint, um, just in the period of, the, of technical issues, uh, to resolve the technical issues. Um, uh, I saw the, the old master, many studies or some paintings or the idea to make a lot of study or some, of something or portrait or whatever. Uh, and I couldn't really, it was too boring for me. So uh, I have some ideas and I say, okay, no. So I have to learn with the, the, the big idea and, uh, and try to resolve the problem. Uh, and, Meanwhile, I'm making something bigger, uh, and, it, and it happened to me a lot. Um, well, not in my first, first beginning, but uh, in the period that you talk, uh, talk to, um, like uh, actually before 2011, like I think I started with a big, um, uh, big canvases around 2007, uh, more or less, uh, South, South and Earth. Uh, and I used to make a lot of mistakes, uh, make a face, I didn't like the face, I erased the face and paint over the face. So I made many studies in the painting. So, uh, but the final result was a uh, big painting in uh, the beginning. Um, not only the big, uh, I made some not that big paintings as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but I remember I used to make a lot of mistakes. I started with a huge painting. I couldn't resolve uh, the whole composition properly in the moment. So eventually, sometimes uh, I destroyed the painting. And I said, OK, or I paint over again, over the painting. Or some woman said, OK, part of the painting works. So I just cut the painting and say, okay, this is going to be the painting and not mm -hmm. the whole first thing. And then step by step, uh, right now I plan it really well in the beginning, uh, the, um, the size, everything. So so for me, it's more clear now how it's going to look the painting at the end. So I, I don't just to make that the same mistake I, again, but sometimes anyway, I change a couple of stuff. It's normal. Mm. <laughs> Man, okay, so I got a lot more questions about your paintings and this topic, even the scale topic, but I don't want to get uh, ahead of myself here. I want to know a little bit about how you decided to become an artist. I mean, let's start back at childhood. Were you always interested <clears throat> in art and how did you end up on this path? Yeah, um, when I was a kid, um, I, I used to paint um, no, well, not paint. I used to draw things I have uh, memories. So I'm not really sure. Um, probably I start drawing like every little kid just just because the little kid used to draw. Uh, um, uh, and, uh, and I was totally upset with dinosaurs. That is quite normal as well for many mm -hmm. kids. Um, and, I, and I needed to draw the dinosaur, not only see dinosaurs. I saw the dinosaurs in books and I wanted to draw it to make all the escapes, uh, the, the, the teeth I remember or uh, different stuff or animals as well, I think. Um, and then, um, and then, um, uh, the first time what I, what I, um, and my mother used to paint as well, uh, as a hobby only. And she had the equipment in, in my house. Um, 
so um so it was really exciting to 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 paint something with, with her something like um i mean not like her because she paints something that i wasn't interested in i, I wanted to paint dinosaurs so i make a huge painting <laughs> uh of dinosaurs N wait, not wait. huge but uh, oh okay i was gonna say huge you're already painting huge i mean <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, but it was kind of cute for me because uh, uh, I have eight years old, uh, and the painting was like one meter by one meter, something like that. Uh, so for a little yeah, kid, it was big. a kind of canvas. With it. yeah, it's kind of big. <laughs> so I, I was really excited with the canvases. I remember really good, um, and and that was my first painting, like oil painting, uh, and it was kind of nice. It's kind of similar to like the composition that I do right now, of course, with the hand of a eight-year-old boy, by, um, uh, but have many, many things in common. It's quite, uh, the, the composition, like the, it's like my, my in, inner algorithms is kind of similar. Uh, that, that's, that, that, um, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, and then, uh, I used to paint a little bit more and then drawing, but nothing like wanted to be an artist or something. I did, uh, I, I haven't had that thought at that time. I was too little. Mm -hmm. um, and I was more interested in sport, actually. Um, I, I used to play tennis a lot. Um, and then, and then, yeah, there I got an injury in my, in my knee. Uh, in the 90s, classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so then I, uh, um, um, I, I found myself like, like we, uh, yeah, with the adolescence, a uh, little lost in the life. I didn't know what to do. So I started to draw in just for fun to do something. And you're um, about what age? Myself... What age when you got the ah, tendonitis? Sorry, yeah, uh, around. Um, uh, 15 turning 16, something okay. like that. Um, and I, uh, um, and I told myself, okay, uh, I used to draw um, without model only, um, um, not, not dinosaur anymore, but drag or, or, to, uh, or, or things, uh, whatever mm. things. Um, yeah, there was a time I wanted to, to draw a unicorn dragon, like magical stuff. And then um, uh, I took um, a portrait, a uh, kind of easy drawn portrait of, um, a, I mean, um, um, a, a photo of someone uh, I think was uh, actually a, a, a poet, um, a Spanish poet called, uh, who has my last name, uh, Federico Garcia Lorca. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but I didn't know it was him actually. Uh, I just uh, uh, there was a book in the in the school and there was the the uh, that portrait that I'm not pretty sure it was a drawing or 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 a really old photo. Um, so I said, oh, what happened if I if I put really hard to do it exactly like this uh, like now take my time or whatever. So I don't have anything to do better. So I took um. Uh, uh, I bought some pens. Um, uh, I have, uh, and I start to draw, win, to measure, to see, uh, oh, what happened? Did it work? It's step by step until until I get it. Uh, I get it. Um, it took me a while, but uh, but I could get something really really similar. Actually, I think I draw it uh, two times. Uh, the second time was more easy, and then I draw it more more on. And yeah, and in a few months I can do some like um, a photorealist drawing. Um, so I said, okay, it's something that I can manage, and um, maybe uh, maybe I can do with painting. And if I got the technique, uh, what can I do? And and I didn't know how world uh, art world anything. So uh, um, I wasn't till in that times so, uh, we barely use internet. So. Uh, 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 um, but that uh, that ignorance uh, in a way helped me because maybe I could feel too overwhelming if I really know about how complex is our world, uh, especially for my um, for the the things that I know in that times. So um, for, um, for me, that time was more simple. I think it's going to be something more like 19th century that that is something that i knew more so um mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, so yeah, it was a point to say, okay, I wanted to be an artist, I'm going to try. Um, um, in Chile, I, I, not only Chile, I, I could say in South America, because uh, it's, uh, um, uh, it's getting, South America countries, depend on the country, but Chile at least, um, just to grow, uh, uh, grow up a, a lot. Uh, in 30 years, so it was that kind of country that coming from the poverty to the middle class. Uh, so, so uh, culturally, it's like, hey, you have to study something, get a title, and then, and then uh, you you need to get money because uh, the life is hard. It's not like follow your dream. It's, uh, it's something like even if my family is really open, my mother is. Um, uh, well, she's a teacher, but a writer as well, and and, and they they told me, okay, uh, uh, you can do it, of course, uh, mm, but it's not going to be um, a game. I mean, you have to do it well. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they said, no, of course, I, I, I don't, I, I, don't uh, I don't want to fall, I don't want to be poor as well. Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm going to fight for this, and actually put myself a, a, a goal in that time. Uh, it was too much my goal, but what works? I mean, um, uh, I, I told her that, okay, I'm going to study art uh, um, and I'm going to have job. No, not job like um, like someone hire me necessarily, but I'm going to get money enough to to, to do by myself uh, and give me um, four years. So uh, I leave the school at uh, 17 and so I have until 21 that was that was my goal uh and if i i, I didn't have to to totally do it but uh, i need to um, i needed to have a uh, some job get some money get, um, get something in order to say hey this is not going to be a disaster uh, eventually uh, this is going to work um um, so it was hurry when when I when when I have a eighteen nineteen uh, I I really try to it's not like hey, I am study art so maybe it doesn't matter what I do so uh, I was totally focused to to do it now <laughs> right um so did you go to university at this point yeah I go to the university to study art um and I didn't like it really uh, I I didn't like it at all maybe the first year was okay because um. In, in the university, they can show me much more things about art that I didn't know, especially the art world of the, uh, well, in that time, the, the end of the 20th century. Um, what happened, especially in the contemporary art, um, uh, what different kind of thought, different kind of, you know, the powers that <laughs> surround, uh, manage in different part of the art world. It's different powers, not the only one. Uh, um, but it was useful. Uh, um, we studied um, uh, art history. Uh, uh, I, I used to know a lot because I I love books with uh, art history. So, um, uh, but uh, I remember. Um, but I, I didn't put attention in medieval art, for example, and they, they showed me that. So it was really interesting. Um, and yeah, and I knew uh, one of my best friends. That's really good as well. Mm-hmm. But the other things I hated, I really did, I didn't like it. I think it's actually uh, the way that they they try to teach to become you an artist, even if it's not necessarily a painter. For a painter, I think it's horrible, the worst. I mean, if you want to be a painter, like figurative painter or kind of, that's not about painting, use the material. Uh, or and then, I don't know, to make sculpture. Uh, at, at least in Chile, but I think in the United States, not that different in the university, in that kind of mm-hmm. structures. Uh, and, uh, and Europe as well, because I, I know some many, many people who go to the university and it's more or less the same experience. Um, I mean, for that kind of artist, I think it's uh, to lose your time. It's really frustrating because um, um, cause you don't have... Um, uh, the technique uh, or different things about technique, even a technological technique could be, hey, to paint in iPad or do different kind of things or or let's see uh, modeling 3D, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
I mean, nothing. <laughs> uh, and in, uh, in the, uh, I, I remember, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, because we have that, uh, we, we have paintings, let's say, uh, in, the, in the power of the, um, uh, in the university class. Uh, but in the first year, many people from the third year, they didn't know how to use the palette. <laughs> I mean, nothing. Yeah. I mean, the palette. They don't know how to put the color in the palette. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, no, so, uh, no, so, yeah, I quick um, to the end of the second year, more or less. Uh, and I got a job, I mean, I got a, um, a commission to make a huge mural. Uh, oh, yeah. What? Now How I'm did you get I, that? With a bigger painting before. Uh, a huge mural, yeah, that, that was huge, like four meters um, by, oh, we use meters, but uh, I don't know. In English, yeah, so about, totally lost. so about 16, huh? oh, let me see, four meters, about 12 feet. It's 12 feet, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's 12 feet, more or less. Yeah. Uh, by 40 meters. So it's. Uh, by 40? Yeah, 4 uh, zero? 40 meters. Uh, 4 zero, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, 45 yards, I think, something like that. Are um, you kidding me? So that's 135 oh, yeah, feet. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it was huge. It was a long. A, a really long and tall one, uh, and I never paint something big actually at that time. Only well, something not that small, like a one and a half meter or something like that. But um, and but but I got the opportunity. Uh, they, they told me, okay, uh, could you do this mural? Uh, no, outside mural it was inside to a vineyard, so it was something more a commission. They're going to pay me the materials, everything. Um, eh, for a big family, uh, a really kind of famous family here, and it's uh, going to be a big vineyard. Um, and they took the risk because I was too young, um, I had 20, uh, and, uh, and I didn't know, but I told them that I, I knew. <laughs> yeah, so wait, so how did this come about? How did you land such a huge mural at that age with so little I experience? Did. I didn't know at all how to plan it. Actually, uh, <laughs> um, I, I tried to find out how to prepare the the the, the wall to to paint. Um, uh, I just prepared with uh, to. Um, and it wasn't that difficult. It was just only gesso uh, and many layers of gesso, and make sure that the wall was totally without something uh, for the other side where that was too humid or something like that. No, um, I'm not talking just, technically. I'm saying, why did they hire you? Why did someone pay oh, no, a kid yeah. who doesn't know how to paint for a 135 foot <laughs> mural? No, because um, uh, I think it was uh, a matter of budget. Uh, the, um, the woman um, who was in, in charge of the, um, to the decoration of the vineyard, uh, it, it didn't know how to do with the, the that big wall because uh, they, they got eventually with that a huge wall and could be rocks or something in between with some something more classic, more boring. And and she saw one of my painting in in my aunt in in my in my aunt's house. Um and on oh, sorry, in the house of my aunt mm -hmm. who was a friend of her. Uh and it was a really nice painting, a painting that I painted from um, uh, for a, for a person who uh, uh, I, I just love. Uh, I mean, just to love a person who died already. Um, uh, I mean, she died. For, she was old. No, yeah. no, it was. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, in, uh, and the painting was really nice uh, because in in that time I. I, I got, I, I started to get in some paintings, not in everyone, uh, good technique and painting that work, uh, work really nicely. So uh, in that moment, because I was, she, she asked her, hey, a really good painter, who, who, who is this guy? Um, say, no, he my, he, uh, he's my nephew, he's really young, he's just 20, oh fuck. So would be, okay, it's a risk, but it's a good tip. <laughs> So let's see what's up. So I can I can I can match it and and 
Well, we beat the project. Uh, I didn't know pretty clear what I'm going to paint, really. Uh, I have some sketches or something. I prepare a couple of things. And she told me, can you do it? I said, yeah, I can do it. Um, I didn't know if I can do it, but I, I said, oh, what the fuck, I can do it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to find <laughs> the, the, the way to do it. Uh, and my... Um, uh, and and she showed the project to the to the owner, and the owner was really excited, saying, "Hey, yeah, that, it's nice. To, uh, I like the idea to to um, I mean to discover someone or whatever, or just uh, let, let's, why why not?" <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so so yeah, I do I, you I try and I learn and, and, and I learn a lot. In the moment. Can I ask you a question about that? Do you attribute some of your success to that attitude? of being willing to do something that feels uncomfortable and way out of your league? You know, because, I mean, I would imagine there are some people, if not many people, if not the majority of people in the world that would say, no, I've never done anything like that before. I'm not qualified. I'm afraid to do it. Hire somebody else. Whereas you you mm-hmm. said, well, no, I don't know how to, and you're, and you're to yourself. You might have said, well, yeah, I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. Do you do you attribute some of your success to that attitude? Yeah, I think it was it, it actually was really important. It's one of my first act. Uh, my um, it's a really good attitude actually, and it's not uh, like um, it's not a kind of ego attitude. Like I said, okay, no, of course I'm super awesome and I can do whatever I want, and and then I don't see the risk or whatever. Um, I saw a lot of risk. I, I was afraid, <laughs> totally afraid. But I, but, but I said, hey, this is the opportunity. Uh, uh, I put the thing in order. I said, okay, it's just a big, a big canvases. Uh, let's try in a smaller. Um, let's do. But it's not. It's not something impossible. It's not like hey, go to. Make a rocket in one year. I don't know how anything yeah. about rocket. Of course, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to do something like that. Uh, but something that I know already, and I, I think is is hard. It's kind of difficult. Maybe the results not going to be perfect, but it's okay. It's opportunity. Let's try. Uh, what's the worst thing that could happen? No, no, nothing that terrible. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So. So yeah, it's like to face that fear and say, okay, it's up here and I can paint with fear for a while and then eventually I'm going to get more confidence. And yeah. and I and I just did it. Yeah. Um it was kind of hard. Um you especially know, for the a, moment that I had a handyman business when I was that that's how I put myself through school. I've always been good with tools and with my hands. I mean, right. good good for my age. You know, my dad had a workshop. And so as a kid, I grew up with some b- basic tools in my dad's workshop. And uh, mm-hmm. I, when I moved to Utah, where I live now, I lived in the basement of a family that I had got, or that I had met, that long story, that I'd met some time ago. I lived in their basement for free rent in exchange for refinishing their basement. I've never refinished a basement, but I told them I could do it. And so I figured, oh, wow. I, I figured I'd just go to the library. I'm mean, like, if, if someone else can do it, why can't I do it? Like, you know, and, yeah. and I told them I could do it and they said, okay, we'll come and get free rent. I'm only 21 years old, 22 years old. And, uh, so I just spent time in the library figuring out how to do drywall, framing, electrical, plumbing, all that kind of stuff. And then, and then she's like, and then I did it and it turned out nice. And then she said, well, you should start a handyman business in the neighborhood. So I started putting out flyers to all the houses in the neighborhood. This was a rich neighborhood. Cause like, again, I'm not rich. I'm living in their basement. So I would get uh-huh. jobs making furniture cabinets, like building decks, you know, adding on additions. Um, I mean, literally custom furniture. There was one point where a guy said to me, Hey, have you ever done cabinets? And I'm like, sure I can do cabinets and uh, I don't think I said I had I just said sure I can do cabinets so I went out I rented a storage unit and then I got a deposit from him with the deposit I bought a bunch of tools went to the library taught myself how to make cabinets and went into the and made cabinets out of a storage unit and the attitude the whole time was I will not sleep and if I mean, if it takes not sleeping to make this happen, I will work 20 hours a day 
seven days a week to make this happen because I want this job. And um, I found it and every job was successful because I was, in, mm -hmm. I was unwilling to fail. So like you said, it was mm -hmm. like, and I've had, I've applied the same attitude toward painting, which is why I asked you that question. But mm -hmm. you seem to have that same attitude. Like, yeah, the, the 135 foot mural, that would intimidate most people. But you seem mm -hmm. to have that attitude. Like, I'm, I'm not willing to fail. I'm going to just do, I'm going to just do it. And I'm not willing to fail. It's not so much. I'm so great. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. It's just this attitude of unwilling, being unwilling to fail. No. Yeah, no, that attitude actually is pretty useful. Um, and for another hand, it's true as well. Uh, mostly of the things that you're going to learn, I mean, you can learn practice. It's good practice, especially for complex things. Uh, in general, it's, uh, but you're going to learn mostly working in something, in a project, or uh, that's the way. And, and of course, if I... It's overwhelming when you see something really complex, like, okay, someone make a, let's say something different, like make a company and you have the company have a different kind of areas and, and different kind of make different kind of service and so on. So, so you say, no, it's too much. It's overwhelming to make a company. It's too much. But you maybe start with a small deal. Hey, let's uh, sell my... I have a lot of collection of uh, toys that I don't like anymore. So let's say buy for internet. Then you start to sell toys and someone else wants to uh, sell more toys. Then eventually you become in a toy store that maybe you own, that you produce your 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 toys. And it's totally different than the, how you start in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you start step by step. Uh, but the only way to really learn is working on something. Um, uh, and practice a little bit, especially for, there's more serious stuff, let's say, okay, if you want to build a building, maybe, uh, you don't need to, I, I think there's a lot of engineers that don't necessarily go, went to the school of engineers, but, um, uh, but of course it's something that you have to know a lot of things and practice because you put the, the life of person in danger or so to be, um, uh, a doctor or stuff like that. Uh, uh, but with many things that, that, uh, especially with manual things, you, you need to learn, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. or, or something that is, uh, if, if, actually, if you want to build a, a, a company, uh, a business, uh, you can go to the business school and know, a, a, how to, uh, you can know a lot of things about to, uh, um, to the market economy in general, uh, to work something or uh, accountancy, stuff like that, maybe mm -hmm. that could be useful. Uh, but I don't think that, well, maybe in Harvard and some school, yeah, but uh, in general, uh, it's difficult that someone who build a company show you how to build a company and your company, the kind of company that you eventually going to make is <laughs> mm -hmm. something that you have to that you have to learn and, uh, and make mistakes and then you get realized and put your things in order and try again, again, until you get something. Um, uh, I think it's kind of similar in the, this kind of things. So every artist is a, is a, no, it could be a company as well, but it's something that you, I, I mean, I can teach someone how to paint, but uh, how, how can I teach someone? I can talk about how I, cre I, I make my ideas to create something, but it's only something that can inspire, inspire someone else. I, I, I can teach uh, someone else how to do, make the job, or I can teach them how to make the things that they do, but not to create something new. <laughs> so, right, so right. That, that, that's something that is, is more, is, is more difficult, something that every person had to find for themselves. So the only thing I think is, is a matter of try. Mm -hmm. That's a valid point. You know, it, I've uh, often seen these incredible master copies from artists. And then, mm -hmm. and it's just like, they're, they, they look just like the master's work. But then you yeah. look at the artist's work, their own individual work, and it's not the same quality. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I've often thought to myself, I mean, I think I know the answer now, and I think you've, uh, you've mm -hmm. touched on it, 
But there, I've often asked myself, why is it that it's so much easier to copy a master painting than it is to create a master painting? And I think, like I said, I think you've touched on it, is that you can teach someone how to do that thing by just mm -hmm. by, by showing them exactly how you executed it. But it's a whole other thing for them to learn how to solve individual and unique problems for a unique painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, it's like to copy everything, you just have to follow steps. It's like to build a Lego. No, well, it's not the same thing. It's kind <laughs> of like Lego that, though. It's kind of like following but, directions with Lego. But you have to follow the... the uh, no, um, it's like, uh, for example, old masters uh, painting. Uh, uh, first, uh, the problem is resolved. Uh, you don't have the model, the composition, and then you have to translate that in a painting. It's already it's a painting. So uh, to copy a painting is a little easy. Actually, it's a kind of good exercise um, to, um, uh, to, to become pixels or real life or flex in paintings. And then, um, and then uh, uh, that painting, the, the old master painting, for example, is good. Uh, and you can see and you want to copy because it's one of the good ones, <laughs> probably. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, um, and probably took a lot of experience or talent or both probably uh, for, for the artist to create, to, uh, uh, to choose the, the, the proper image, to get something. Uh, it, it's, to create something used to be, um, in general, it's more difficult uh, to just um, copy you know, uh, of first. And, and I think in, in many things, uh, technology as well, if someone creates a new technology, eventually it's not that difficult. And it's, it's a matter of time that someone can copy something more or less the same and maybe improve it. And, and that's how uh, human beings grow up <laughs> more mm -hmm. and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's one thing's one of the things that's so amazing about your work because your work is so complex and you know, cuz it's not just about copying a master painting. There's another way of looking at this. I find it relatively easy to just look at a model and copy a model, right? It's simple mm -hmm. to just sit someone in a chair, have them look at you, paint them. That's, that's relative, relatively, it's not easy, but it's relatively easy compared to what you do and many artists do, many great artists do, where you're not just looking at a person, you're creating a world on a two-dimensional surface that doesn't exist. That's so much mm -hmm. bigger than just looking at something and reproducing it, whether that be a painting or a model sitting in front of you or a still life sitting in front of you or whatever. It's, you're creating something in your work that doesn't exist. It's it's mind blowing. No, yeah, it's uh, and actually it's kind of complicated. Uh, it's a matter of tribe. Um, I, I used to create something. Uh, um, there's, uh, I used to, um, let's say to, um, there's two souls in the things. Uh, one of them is create uh, a, an image that for me is a poetic image that means something. Um, but it's not, I don't know what is the, uh, I don't know exactly what is the image that is going to make that means for me. Uh, I have to build it. Uh, um, I can recognize it when I got it, but no, no, not before. I just have a small idea, a small spark, like say, hey, what's happening if I use something like this and this? I think this is the way. So I start to mix and create image and, um, and and right now I work like uh, a mix between some pictures with drawing over the pictures, then more pictures. Then when I get something more or less and I think it's going to work, I make a um, uh, I need probably more uh, uh, more pictures to uh, so I make up. Uh, I have to do a production for to take the pictures or or well I already have a lot of. Uh, animals or persons or whatever. Um, uh, if it's necessary to buy a picture for stock image, I did as well, uh, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I just do, um, and then I mix it in order to get more or less, um, and I try put, and eventually it works. There's a moment, there's a point that I said, oh, okay, it's working. And, and the symbol work with the composition. I, I like it, I like it. And, 
uh, and this could be something different. I got another idea, and that may be becoming another thing. <laughs> right. uh, it's, it's, it's something like that. So, um, but only work when I, I put my, my brain work, uh, in a work mode. Um, and then you start to get the idea. It's really fun. Uh, in the beginning, it's quite difficult because uh, um, you get tired because it's too much process for the brain. So you literally get tired. So uh, before you even start painting, the, just process the know, process of creating. Uh, just, the, yeah, the process of creating is um, it's a lot of energy for the brain. So uh, so even if I start, it's really fun. Um, my brain then remembered that it's, uh, had to spend too much energy. So it's difficult to start always. Uh, every day is difficult to start. It's like, hey, let's pray something. And my brain is like, hey, but maybe we can take a coffee. Maybe we can see what's happening in Israel. Maybe we can start to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and and the only reason is because my, my brain not, knows that I'm, it's going to to spend too much energy and want to keep the energy for, I don't know, to survive, but I don't need to survive. I just <laughs> had to, I had to fight against uh, that, that trick that my brain did to me, do to me all, all the time. Uh, but then when you, it's like to, to go to running, uh, in the beginning it's like, uh, running, uh, but then when you get the rhythm, it's like, ah, oh, this is kind of nice. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I want to come back to this, but I, I want to ask you something before we get way into your painting. I noticed on your website that you also studied with um, Odd Neardrum. Yeah. Is that right? Tell me a little bit about that. When did you do that and what was that like? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was uh, uh, after the, the, the mural that I told you. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to... Uh, uh, and that time I, I discovered but, but for, um, for a magazine in Chile that uh, uh, presented him as um, the new Rembrandt. And there was a big interview uh, about him. Um, um, and I said, oh, okay, nice. I mean, I, I love his paintings uh, immediately. Uh, and then I searched more and I said, okay, um, we didn't have Facebook at that time, so, or, or maybe yes, no, maybe yes, but I didn't have uh, Facebook myself. I didn't know about Facebook, actually, but I think Facebook already exists, but for, uh, I, I didn't have it. So, um, so no, yeah, I just contacted his gallery, um, I, I sent some things and I, I and asked them if, uh, if, if they know if he's old, I have a um, pupils or something like that. Just, I, I, I imagine that maybe he has something like that. I didn't know anything about Netflix school, nothing. It's just, uh, it was a guess. Um, and, and they came back to me and told me, yeah, yeah, of course, let's paint, you know, we're going to, to show them and let's see what's happening. And I'm just, okay. And I continue my life and in, in a few months, uh, I got an email uh, from his wife uh, to read. And uh, she, she told me something really simple like, um, hi, um, I like painting. Yeah, we, we have this thing that uh, you, you can come to Norway and stay. We have our guest house. And yeah, you can come the next month if you want. And I said, oh. Well, well, bye bye. <laughs> really <Yeah. laughs> short. But I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what can I do? Well, let's see. Uh, I have to get peace. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, yeah, and I spent uh, like five months. Six, well, I spent six, but uh, no, well, I spent a little more in Europe because then I stay in Spain and. Well, um, uh, but, but yeah, around five, a little more month uh, without. Um, and it was really nice. Uh, what's interesting, I'm, I mean, the experience was uh, kind of insulated in a way uh, because I was, uh, I was during the winter time. So there wasn't too many people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was Nedron's family uh, and two more persons and then, um, then come in a, a, a few more uh, for a short time. Uh, so, but it was a really introspective uh, period. 
uh, I think I, I learned some things about technique, um, but it wasn't the most important. I, I got some some things, yes, of course, uh, but I realized in that moment um, it, what's happened with, with the, the, the people who work with um, someone who, with a master. Uh, and I, I, I realized that the problem, the, uh, the master in this case, Odd, uh, made an amazing painting. And, and yeah, and I, and I wanted to, hey, I want to do something as great as him. But um, if I just follow his steps, I'm going to get something like that room, but, but look like Odd Nerd Room paintings, but no, no, not my kind of painting. And, and, and I love that thing. But I, maybe I can take something of the, or uh, maybe uh, I, I like really much something really specific, like the way that the brush stroke is here. But maybe I can do some totally different colors. Maybe my sub. And I thought that in that moment a lot about it, what the sub, what my feelings are. Um, and 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 I saw that all, for all the painting is uh, is secret, uh, is sacred. It's totally something that. Uh, it's really important for him. It's not something banal at all. It's uh, it's, it's kind of religion for him uh, in in a in a good way. I mean, uh, he really um, uh, he really uh, his things, his feelings, uh, his paintings really true for say something. Uh, mm -hmm. It's his truth. Uh, so I, I learned from him, um, in, no, not because he told me or something. He, at that time, I remember I, I barely speak English, uh, less Norwegian, nothing, of course. So it was kind of difficult to communicate for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and so then um, I, um, no, but, but I got that. I, I got that I to, had to find inside myself a feeling that really moved me. Uh, otherwise, I don't have any kind of guide. It's, it's, it's really difficult to um, uh, to follow only the thing that works in for another artist and finding yourself that it's going to work or not. I think uh, I saw, so realized um, uh, that I had to follow my, my instinct, my strong feelings. And at the same time, um, and my taste as well. Uh, I, I knew, uh, and my taste is going to be, uh, many people are going to have a similar taste and that's all. I mean, I don't have to think too much about this. This is going to work, the people are going to like it. I, I don't know. <laughs> too mm -hmm. difficult to know. <laughs> what they, what men, what things the people are going to like. It's better to, to just, if I like it, probably maybe the people like it. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, hey, but I had to. What What do you think's different? I mean, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of knockoff artists. A lot of artists that are I don't I shouldn't say knockoff, but a lot of artists that are really influenced by him. I mean, sometimes I'll see on Instagram paintings, and I'll think, "Wait, is that an odd nerd room? No, it's somebody else." You know, uh -huh. and uh, but I've known a, actually. I've known. Let me see. On my podcast, I've had. I can think of three. Mm -hmm. Nicholas O'Leary studied with him, Teresa Oaxaca, mm -hmm. Alex Venezia, mm -hmm. now you. There might have been more. And of you four, mm -hmm. none of you look like Odd Nerdrum. But obviously, no, when you yeah. go there, you respect him. You must like his work when you go there. Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of escape oh, yeah, that influence? Uh, because um, uh, it wasn't like... Uh room trying that you paint in one way or another. In general, uh, Oda, uh, as long as I remember, he just do his routine, paint, talk about whatever, life or, or something else. But it's not like a, 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 a go to your work and say, hey, you have to paint like this and this. No, not at all. Actually, he, he just, he, he, it's kind of weird that he, uh, he, he gives you a specific advice. In general, he just, uh, but, but you can see him paint and talk and ask questions or whatever. Um, maybe his figure, uh, symbolically talking, is really strong. It's a kind of big and uh, really young guy with a strong voice. Uh, the whole mystical, maybe the, the people uh, becoming a kind of 
father or ah, I don't know uh, uh, God you want to be like like him uh, yeah but um yeah mm, I, I I never had that problem I mean it, it wasn't in my mindset to, to mm -hmm. copy the master uh, I I think because I was uh, I had the ambition uh, to uh, to become myself in a master so I I uh, I couldn't uh, uh, and I uh, and I knew the history of the um, uh, in in older times. For example, let's say uh, Van Dyck. Uh, I mean, Rubens have a lot of uh, uh, have a lot of pupils, a lot. Uh, and he made a kind of factory of paintings uh, with many people who paint like Rubens and and paint uh, mostly of the big paintings, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, one of them was Anthony Van Dyck, and Anthony Van Dyck. There was a point that that in the in in, in his beginning was a little more like Ruben, but then it was totally Van Dyck. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and oh, the same Da Vinci. Da Vinci was the pupil of Verrocchio, and and there's a small painting of Verrocchio. Well, not that small as painting of Verrocchio, and there's some angel that paint for Da Vinci, or the people think, but look like. Um, and then Da Vinci, of course, makes something, another painting totally different than Verrocchio. Um, could be kind of similar. I mean, don't have to be 100% different, but, but I think it's important to, to, okay, you grow up and there's a moment that you have to have the, it's like your childhood, but then you need the adolescence in order to, hey, I, I, I'm going to do uh, another another way. And yeah. then I'm going to probably come back and do something. I'm going to come back with my, uh, um, I know, another um, way to say, uh, you, need the, to, you need to do the, your own trip in a way to, um, to go to the desert, <laughs> let's say. Uh, um, I, I think if you copy too much your masters, it's like you don't leave the nest. You, you, yeah. you need to leave the nest in a, and find out to yourself and don't. You learn a lot of tool, fine, and then okay, do something with that tool. Yeah. Uh, and but it can be the same thing. Uh, um, but it could be whatever. <laughs> There's many things that you can do. <laughs> right. This episode is brought to you in part by Rosemary Brushes. If you're one of my listeners who's a professional artist, you're already using Rosemary Brushes. But for the rest of you, come on. Take your work a little more seriously. Stop buying the other brands. It's just not worth it. Every now and then you may get lucky and buy a good brush from another brand. But oh, shit. use the brand that professionals like myself are using. Go to rosemaryandco.com, link in the description or the show notes, and get yourself some quality brushes before your next painting. Tell me a little bit about um, how and when you started to pick up momentum after leaving Odd Nerdrum Studio in your career. When did things start to happen? Oh yeah, um, after Odd, um, I came back to Chile and I was pretty lost. Uh, I didn't have any project at all, so um, so I tr uh, so I invented a project. Um, I had the idea to to make uh, I, uh, in odd uh, odd used to make a, a small paintings a small portrait and i imagine uh, what happened is that small portrait could be huge but painting that way paint like a small painting but really really big like a uh, oh, master a painting minute. but huge is this on instagram uh in instagram i, ha I have a couple so yeah they're not, not too much because it's an old project yeah so, okay um so yeah, imagine like okay, three and a half meters. I mean, like this is yeah, uh, yeah, almost uh, twelve feet by twelve feet, something like that. This one? Oh yeah, that thing. Yeah, you're yeah. kidding. This is your first project coming out of Odd Nerdrums. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but, wow. but but I mean, the project doesn't. No, nobody offered the project. I, it was the halfway around. Uh, I said like okay. I have this. Uh, I have this idea. So what's up? Uh, where I can I put these big paintings? And uh, and in that times, um, the subway of Chile uh, had a project called a uh, uh, Metro Arte. That means like a uh, Metro. Well, Metro Arts kind of uh, mm -hmm. kind of simple. Um, and if you if you get the budget with a company, 
you the uh, and you pass for some bureaucracy process you can you can get the space to to put your things uh, forever i mean uh, it's going to be part of the subway so so i say okay yeah i i choose one place that i could put different portraits and say okay let's do it uh let's try to find the budget um and um and the per uh, and and i um the most difficult part was to pass for the bureaucracy i had bureaucracy it's horrible um and then the budget wasn't that difficult because uh, I knew the the person who hired me for the for the vineyard. So um, the, uh, he has a big company, and so I asked him, "Hey, I have this project. We can do that." And I say, "Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Uh, but at the same time, we have a um, a place to for make exhibitions. So can you do an exhibition with the project?" I said, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> Another one of those. <laughs> Another one of those oh, jumping one. in head first, right? Oh, yeah. Again, like, yeah, yeah, of course, an exhibition, a project, whatever. I can do it. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, but I could do it. Uh, luckily, I have some paintings. Uh, so I wasn't a star for zero. So I started to work a lot, make a, a lot of paintings. And... Um, and the project at the same time. So we do, uh, we did... Uh, um, uh, that exhibition and the project, and then, and then I have another commissions, uh, uh, um, and I got lost again. <laughs> In general, this to happen. Wait, um, what do you mean you got so lost? I, I got lost in sometimes you you make pro a project, uh, you get you are successful with the project. Actually, you get more commission or something, but there's a moment that eventually. If you don't have another thing immediately, you get like, hey, I, there's a moment that you are, maybe you have, let's say, demand for survive for to sell painting or something, but no, I didn't have a, an exhibition ahead or nothing. Mm. Um, so you felt so like you I kind said, of hit a oh, wall. You were just like, oh crap, now what do I do? Yeah, exactly. So I said, okay, let's try to find a, a museum, yeah, I was. <laughs> a museum, you went right for a museum. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I love yeah, it. Yeah, no, I tried. <laughs> well, it was a museum in Tila, but um, the, 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 bigger, the bigger one. Um, I talked with um, uh, a friend who's a, a gallerist, and I said, okay, um, it didn't work to make a um, business only as a gallery but uh I, I, and, she ha and she and she wasn't living in Chile. she was living in New York, uh, but i mean she was a she right now she's a gallerist but uh that moment she was dealer uh, she didn't have the, her space so ask her um uh, do you know the the new director hey do you think you can get something okay and we can yeah try that try to do and you can create and try to sell the painting i don't know let's see uh, um, but uh, are you ready? Maybe you are too young for them. Oh, let's try it. What, what's the worst thing that happened? I mean, it's just to ask something. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And we did it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so oh I got, uh, uh, but of course, I needed uh, uh, almost few, two years, a little less, uh, to prepare everything. So, um, so, but I, but I, but I have a, but I have a goal, I uh, had a goal. So, so I started to So to be clear, this was a exhibition. show at a museum in Chile. Yeah, yeah, a big color show. It was uh, 25 paintings. Um, so no, no, the painting was huge, but uh, but it was really good. I know, but in the meanwhile, I made an exhibition in Mexico. No, sorry, I lost my, my, my old biography. No, I did something, <laughs> Kind of big before that uh, a solo exhibition in a really good gallery in Mexico City. Um, actually, it was the gallery that show uh, Damien Hirst in Mexico a solo show, which is painting all of a uh, one a kind of well, you know, Damien Hirst have a lot of different stages in a way. He he's most famous for his sculptures for the you know the the shark in a. Right. In the liquid or, like or the big, big sculpture. Exactly, the sculpt with diamonds as well. Uh, 
and, and sometimes he paints but with his hand actually uh, um, and in, at that point he made paintings like with a lot of scopes and that's why he wanted to show in Mexico but then of course the, the paintings uh, went to another place or some, I don't know uh, but it was uh, the same gallery and my, my aunt uh, uh, supported me at that time, uh, helped me a lot so so she was living in Mexico and know people and, and eventually know he, the gallery and say hey and, and make the match. Uh, and then after that exhibition, uh, I, 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 I got a little lost and then I said, okay, let's, do, let, let, let's get for the museum. Um, but it was the gallery first. Yeah, I made yeah. a mistake. <laughs> uh, in, it was uh, and and, uh, and it, it it was really good. I mean, I I always when I don't have something, I try to I, I try to find it. I try to say, okay, what I want, um, um, and what I want, and the only thing that I try to see is if uh, if um if the place that I want to show or something is um have a match with the kind of thing that I have. But mm -hmm. it's a matter of of the person who are who manage the things eventually all the, the institutions or galleries or whatever is managed by people and it's just people you have to, have to i mean eventually you don't like i mean the people don't like you and it's okay i mean it, it's not not always work for me uh sometimes i try to to get something and i don't get any result but eventually, I forgot that kind of failures. It's just something in the moment you feel like, oh, fuck, but that's mm -hmm. it. I don't know. Right now, I'm more used to it. Uh, if something doesn't work, I, I, I don't care. I didn't want it. Okay, let's do Let's try another thing. Uh, plan B, plan A. Uh, in general, I don't have plan B. It's just I said, okay, let's create another plan A. <laughs> yeah, that's a great uh, so, way of looking at it. So what you're saying is when you yeah. have a plan, you don't plan to fail. You plan to succeed, and then when you do fail, you start again. You plan to succeed. Oh yeah, 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 totally. Uh, because you put more energy, and if you do it in order to to get success, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it's like um, uh, um, I was um, a judge of a painting contest um a few months ago. It was really nice. Uh, and it's, uh, was that I the one in Spain, out, uh, in the meme in, in Barcelona? Spain, yeah. in, Dude, in, I, saw Barcelona, it, yeah. I saw some clips of that. And you're with Antonio Lopez Garcia and a few others. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, my and gosh. Was, Dude. That was amazing. Yeah, that yeah. must have been awesome. Congrats on being invited to be the judge on that. That was pretty, that must have been pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Um... No, it was yeah, it was really moved. I mean, to to uh, to, to meet him. Uh, uh, it was one of my reference when I was actually a teenager. And I knew him so that's well, was cute. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, he doesn't speak English, does he? <laughs> he's he don't speak English very well. He speaks something, yeah, but it's oh, not okay. Because I'd love to get him on the show, but I don't speak any Spanish, so. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, um, yeah, no, he, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I remember uh, there was some another moment. No, no, but he speak, but I don't know. I don't know for an interview. Mm, I think I I, 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 I didn't speak English with him, but I remember there was some, uh, there was some moment that uh, Antonio Lopez Odnetru and Godfrey Helpan was the uh, and Lita Cavalut was the. the um, uh, was just for the same conquest, but in another year, like 2015, I think. Um, and I think there was a translate, a, a, they, had, they got a translator because mm. it, it, it uh, seems like they couldn't do in English all, all the time. Uh, that's my memory. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems mm -hmm. like uh, 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 his English is not totally fluent, uh, I right. think. Well, congrats on that. Uh, that was cool to see you there. At that contest on that panel, that was some panel. Oh yeah, no, it was really fun actually. I love it. Uh, I, I love to do it. Um, but I feel real that um, 
Um, some artists, not all, all them, or no, all of them, of course. Um, um, they didn't show their best painting for the conquest. They, 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 they show something like in the middle. Okay, let's see the conquest mm. because. Um, and I think it's because of the same reason you're, you're saying like, okay, if I'm lucky, I put something in the conquest. Um, but you don't want to put your best things because it's going to hurt more if you are failing, if you don't win. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I've got something to say about that one because I have never joined a contest with even close to my best work, not even close. I mean, I've, I've joined a few contests and I'll just submit what's laying around the studio. And the reason why is because, frankly, I can't afford to put my best work in the contest because I have to sell my best work and it's, and it, it's spoken for. So um, it's tricky. I, I've, and I don't know if that's the case for a lot of these people, but it's certainly the case with me where my, my work is always spoken for. So then when a contest comes along, I just don't have anything except, except what's sitting around the studio. And so oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, it, it depends on the rule of the conquest. That's true. Uh, for example, okay, if you are going to, um, if the if the place is going to keep is going to keep your your work uh, uh, without, um, let's say, the third price, and they keep your words and the money is less that you can sell by yourself. It's, it's not a business. Of course, right, you can't right. do it. It, maybe if the first price is more money or something more similar, uh, the, 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 how you sell in the paintings, um, it could work. Uh, and then you get your painting back and then you can sell it anyway. Uh, but I think, uh, by, but, but a lot of people in the conquest is, um, is really, it's really, uh, probably the half is really young people, so they don't have anything to lose about it. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I understand. I mean, I, I didn't know too much about conquest. I never went to one of them. Uh, um, but for laziness, but maybe, but maybe for fear to not win and things, and maybe it was some mistake. I mean, right now, of course, it's not the moment for conquest, but uh, and. Um, but many years ago, it could be, and I could have a chance to win something maybe uh, in, in many years ago with some some works, uh, and I didn't make the chance to do it uh, just for 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 for, uh, for be afraid to um, to lose. But you know, um, I, I mean, uh, and, and my experience, uh, just uh, we are too many just, so um, it's not like everybody has their own taste and eventually you put like points in i like this one this one and but eventually the one that i like the most the other person don't like at all so maybe don't win anything but for me it was my favorite you, you know it's, it's i know it's so subjective and, that's why you can't be hurt by it i had a i had an experience with a contest have you ever heard the podcast i mean i'm not gonna be offended if you say no but I'm not, you don't even have to answer actually. <laughs> but Micah Christensen is an art historian that I get on the podcast all the time. And uh, he talks uh. about dead artists and their work. And uh, Micah was a judge for a local museum um, contest. And uh, mm -hmm. I trust that he wasn't, he, he wasn't doing this because he's a friend, but he told me about the situation where I had submitted a work and to be fair, this time it was one of my best works. I had submitted a work, mm -hmm. it was called Consumed. It's this giant still life. The museum ended up and now owns it, but it's just giant mm -hmm. still life that's like eight, well, not, not compared to you, giant for me. It was eight feet tall by by six feet wide. And um, okay. anyway, I'd submitted that to the contest and there were two judges. There was Micah, who mm -hmm. leans toward appreciating realism. And then there was another artist or another museum director from a contemporary museum who loves like uh loves like installation art and really really modern work she hated my work hated it and she and the two of them had to fight over it he wanted to make mine first place she wasn't even going to let it in the show <laughs> like it wasn't even it wasn't even allowed to be viewed in her opinion and so what he had to do 
he was so sure he wanted mine to be first place. What he had to do is give up all of his other votes. So he chose mine for first and she agreed I could have first, but she gets to choose second, third, all the runner ups, everything. If he could just mm -hmm. have first. So I was able to win, but only because there was one, because the one judge was willing to fight for it. But the reason I bring that up is because it's so interesting. These contests, people can't get their feelings hurt because if he, if Micah wasn't there, not only would I have not won, I wouldn't even have been in the show. And it was one of my best paintings. Oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's terrible. I mean, you, you can't, you can't judge your value based on a contest. No, no, not at all. And actually the, the, the contest, uh, it's really nice. I mean, sometimes it's good if you are part of the selection, let's say, or or honor mention. Uh, maybe honor mention. Uh, actually, with um, as a uh, as a, uh, all the judges um, have the idea that every honor mention could be the winner, but but eventually we had to make um, we had to say, okay, mm -hmm. uh, who have more points? But more points not, doesn't mean that it was the favorite painting for every one of us. Uh, but it, but it was, it's too difficult that uh, every judge say, okay, this is my favorite. Oh, me too, me too, me too. Okay, one. <laughs> Sometimes right. happen, but it's, right. uh, it's not really common. Uh, and, and it's a really good moment to, to know the exhibition, know the other artists. Um, um because you're com you are competitive with other artists uh you have a competition in a way but at the same time you are part of a community um and you can co um, cooperate a lot as well uh because um uh there's a market enough and i think actually if we we are talking about only figurative painting specifically uh i think it's better more that we can compete to ourselves for our, as, a, as a game in a way mm -hmm. like if you are playing a uh, nintendo and want to compete and win <laughs> but it's not like it's not uh not you are not it's not a war and you are just competing for for fun in a way it's useful but but then uh, as a community, it's better to cooperate and try to find a um, better place to uh, uh, to be in a better place in a heart in the heart history in a way. Uh, actually, um, uh, um, um, figurative painting or uh, uh, with social media drop a lot uh, with murals in uh, street murals, uh, digital painting, Instagram, anything. Uh, it's a revival of figurative painting illustrations uh, because uh, for many many years in the art world was a kind of minor things like illustration like something like I don't know do something for for an illustration you can do it for a magazine or something like that but it was difficult to to get a position in big museums or be part of the art history uh, so uh, the, the the problem of Figurative artists wasn't the other figurative artists. It was, <laughs> it was uh, together we can get something. But uh, right. um, so um, uh, and yeah, and and it's, it's take, uh, and actually um, uh, and, and and it's okay. There was a moment I think in the beginning of two thousands. Uh, there was too many installations, too many. Uh, concept art, too many only installation and concept art, and, and you didn't have the other things, so it was too much. It's okay. I mean, I like installation actually. I, I'm not the, someone that I hate it or I don't understand or nothing. Is, um, but uh, but I like the diversity in the museums or places. Uh, I like to see okay, I see a red paint and then change and see a totally weird installation, conceptual, and then something more. A mix between different stuff. Who knows? It's, mm -hmm. it's fun. The creativity of different human beings is, is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, but occasionally you get a judge that's just very. Not occasionally. I think we all can have our own. Uh, I mean, we can all be narrow-minded in yeah. our opinions on some level. You know, I like to think of myself as open-minded, but there's a certain type of abstract painting that appeals to me, and there's a certain type of installation art that mm. turns me on. There's a certain type of realism that I'm attracted to. So if I'm yeah. a judge, I'm going to have a different, different, I'm going to have a different set of winners than another judge regardless. But. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. It's impossible to have the same taste. It's 
there's many things that influence and that uh, could be uh, your 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 childhood your experience your your environment your genetic mm -hmm. you know? so it's too much too many things so it's uh, that's why you can't control that you you have to find your space that's all mm -hmm. one of the things you said that i really like and i never thought about and correct me if i misunderstood you but that we're not competing with other figurative artists and actually the more figurative artists there are the more realists there are the better it is for all of us because we're creating a movement and creating appreciation oh, yeah. by 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 other mm. that's i really like that so when i see someone like oh, yeah, you sure. who's great i can feel pride for the movement of uh great art and it, you you're going to open doors for me and other realists by creating appreciation for realism that's great oh yeah no no it's totally uh i think actually it's it's a it's a movement um um the numbers can show that not only the um, the numbers is already in the social media in different galleries uh, uh um and it's a matter of numbers it's a matter of time uh, yeah of course you need that that the, the generate um it's kind of um in the generation is kind of um uh, let's say um young mm -hmm. not super young but young so eventually you need more time to totally set up as a movement you need more time to uh, to 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 go back and say okay that was the movement of the of the scent uh, of the um, 2020s or, or the, the 20s or the 10th or whatever um you need more time and then uh, uh mm -hmm. generation change. so so eventually it's going to be the moment that we may be uh, the figurative painter becoming a secret cause and then someone else <laughs> who a different totally different kind of art is going to to <laughs> to take our place and it could be it's okay who it's knows who knows hey uh, just in case you're curious let me show you the painting that micah fought for real quick so this is it okay. right here it's called consumed and it there's like a oh that's really nice there's like 150 different items here uh, items in here it took me about six months but yeah, that's the one. That's wow. the one that it almost didn't even make it into the show. If Micah hadn't been there, it wouldn't even have made it into the show. But, you know. Oh, the composition is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, but now let's oh, look no, at your no. work. Uh, and, 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 and I love it. it Work us on a kind of abstraction mix with uh, really people. It's really, really nice. Oh, love thank it. you. Thank you. Well, let's look at yours, man. I, again, when you <laughs> agreed to do this, I got to tell you, man, I was starstruck because... Yeah, there's yeah, just not a lot of people like you out there and, and uh, i mean everyone i interview are master painters i i believe i pick people who i believe are master painters but what you're doing is so complex there's just not a lot of people doing stuff as complex as you and so like i said it leaves me kind of starstruck i'm really grateful to be able to talk to you about this but i'm going to actually start with uh your more recent work and we'll work our way back if we need to but maybe Let's see, let's start a little bit with your concepts. First of all, you've obviously got this thing where you're combining animals and people mm -hmm. and imaginative landscapes and a lot of different very cool still life elements and interiors. I mean, they're so unbelievably complex, but there, it, there's this incredible unity from painting to painting like it's you could spot your painting and 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 from any other artist and you could totally recognize your paintings what is it what is it about your combination of all these elements well, let me rephrase that mm -hmm. how how did you come across this subject matter how did you land on this very unusual grouping of animals and still life and interior that frankly i've never seen oh, before yeah. oh yeah yeah no because i think uh okay there's some um i have a kind of mindset composition that i like in my mind uh mm -hmm. inspiring different artists probably especially i think uh, rubens and tiepolo 
Mm-hmm. Um, and Caravaggio, maybe, I'm not really sure, but some of them probably. Um, and then, um, it's because I, uh, for example, um, well, there's many characters that I used to repeat. And uh, not the same one, but some of them. Is yeah, like this girl, the... I've seen her. I feel like I've seen her in many paintings or someone like her. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because uh, in the paintings in general, I have uh, um, little girls. There's two kind of little girls. One of them is have uh, the, the hair like uh, pink or blue or, or something like that. Uh, there's another girl that sometimes is, uh, is more like normal little girl. And uh, sometimes I paint woman. Actually, she's not. Um, actually, that one is not a little girl, but it's for oh, the position. Yeah. It's a woman. <laughs> well, these are some little kids Everybody that are thinks normal. It's a little girl. Yeah. Huh? These are little kids that have normal hair, um, hair color. In, in this yeah. case, I, I, I just little kids. It's really weird that I paint a, a male in general. Um, sometimes I do it, but not. It's not really often. Even if it's a kid or 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 male, uh, grow up male. Uh, I used to paint more female uh, characters. Um, could be uh, girls uh, or women or um, animals. Animals, I always have animals, different kind of animals. Um, and, and for me, it was like, I created some ideas and it was like, okay, um, because I, I don't really know why. Uh, it just in my mind say like, hey, I can put this element, but I think, why don't I choose another one? And 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 myself, part of myself say, uh, doesn't many doesn't make sense for me if I don't put that character. It's something like I must do it. It's not because I want to do it. It's not a rational thing. It's just the the character came to me. Uh, and must be there for some reason. Uh, I feel that that didn't don't work without some character or another. It's, it's, it's a weird feeling. Mm. Um, and okay, maybe we could talk I'm... about a specific painting because, and maybe if we break oh, yeah. down a specific painting, then that'll help me to understand. Like, let's take this one here. This is not an animal I'm familiar with. It looks like an imagined animal. It's got like the head of a cat. Oh yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Goat body actually, of a goat or a llama or something. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that that painting is huge. Uh, it's like uh, three meters by five, more or less. Um, so uh, it's like um, so about yeah, nine by fifteen painting. feet. Nine by fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Man. Uh, a nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah, a little less than nine think, uh, by yeah, something like that. Um, uh, no, yeah, and um, uh, well, that painting was a difficult approach to get the painting. Uh, I was a little high, I remember in 2015. I was in my coat, but not too high. It was wait, little, wait, wait, wait. Do you mean um, high as in high on marijuana or something? Or high? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, yeah, marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, so funny because uh, i was gonna make a joke i'm like were you high on something when you came up with this animal but you literally <laughs> you literally were <laughs> i was literally high um, oh man that's and, awesome and, and, so that's the secret to creativity <laughs> is smoking pot okay <laughs> <laughs> oh well no, it, can't, it can't resolve everything with, uh, with uh, but we can talk about it it's interesting because uh, it was um uh, I was, uh, I mean, in my, in my mind, I was just, um, I closed my eyes and, uh, and I imagined myself just, I was relaxing, uh, to the music, I was walking in my mind, uh, through a field. Uh, I feel like, I, I feel like, uh, an empty field, like, uh, in a, like climbing a hill, um, not, not really high field. Right. It looked like from, uh, on the painting, you can see a kind of yellow one. Yeah. Uh, and I was just walking, walking. Um, and there was a moment that that kind of figure, something similar, uh, just show up for me. And I don't know. It was a kind of it was a kind of an hallucination. Um, oh man, I'm loving this. This is great. You should try mushrooms. Imagine what you'd make with mushrooms. 
Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it, 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 this, uh, I, I don't know, this was stronger than mushroom because uh, with mushroom, I didn't have any kind of... Uh, <laughs> you've, tried, I mean, I try every... you've tried the mushrooms already. <laughs> oh yeah, you yeah, know, I try every, every doses that you can imagine. <laughs> this is great. But... But I can get something with mushroom. I feel okay. I feel nice. I like. I like to hug trees and, <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's oh, man. oh man! No, but I get. I just have to take a minute to thank each one of my generous patrons for your part in keeping this podcast going. I could not continue to do it without you. So thank you so much. If you're not a patron yet, but you love the show and you listen regularly, please consider becoming a patron. It's really easy to do and it doesn't have to break the bank. Just head over to theundrapedartist.com and click on the link, Be My Patron on Podbean. And then choose a monthly donation amount that fits your budget. It's that simple. Mostly of my idea, I got sober, actually. Uh, it's just... Um, uh, um it, th this one specifically uh i got the, the first idea the, the first image of this huge animal not exactly like this one but something more or less look like and and i start to look at the the eyes and i remember the ears and something inside here in the front and then uh it was like oh wow, that was strong <laughs> okay and but and, and it wasn't that high, so I started to make some drawing idea, and I just keep the idea and said, okay, let's let's try to make something like a, this big animal, but I have to look for more reference. So I start to, um, I when I have the opportunity, I go uh, if I saw, especially old sculptor of Assyrians, for example, or, uh, or sculptor, there's a huge one of the, in Vatican, it's a um, Greek one, I think, or a copy of one, uh, of the, um, of the Nilo, the god of Nilo. Actually, I don't know if it's that old, but doesn't matter, it's a, deals with different kids climbing over him. Um, mm. And uh, I start to get different idea for the composition. And I imagine something huge with different small things trying to climb. And then I start to get the idea that it's going to be kind of female, big animal that feed in a way, but kill the other animal in a way. It's a kind of, but, but then I didn't know how to resolve in that moment. So, so I got the reference and then uh, five years later, uh, I took the idea again and say, okay, let's do it. Uh, put the thing in order, get the composition and do it, do it, do it. Uh, uh, and, and I did it in 2020. Um, uh, during the pandemic, I had more time, of course. <laughs> so, so I make this big painting. Um, but in general, sometimes you just have a small idea, like, okay, I like maybe something just for taste. It's like, okay, this background, I like, it's really cute. What's happening if I put this animal and I have a folder of different characters, different idea of character that I like, and I said, Maybe this character could work here. Let's try. No, no. Oh, yes, this could be. But could be better if I do this. <laughs> That's how I start to work. Mm. It's something like, uh, it's, it's not like I have everything in my mind before. I have something. But so this just something. started with one animal that you came up with when you were high. You, you imagine yourself walking through a field. You got one animal. And then you built on that. You're, you you just envision this animal, but then you built on that by adding all these other elements? Uh, yeah, but in this case, I didn't know how to the animal going to look like exactly. Um, I only knew that I want something big animal stare at me uh, in a field with many, maybe other animals, maybe birds, maybe kids. Maybe, I didn't know really. Uh, I, I know I, I, I only want many things over the animal on the animal, that's all. Um, it was something really not precise. Then I'm with that feeling, I start to uh, make composition. In the beginning, this composition part for many stages in the be uh, there was a point where there was two big animals, there there was a tree, there was a, a, 
many birds and st- this kind of uh, and then I got the, the composition. It's, it's many, many steps before to start to paint, actually. Does at some point it go from an animal, just an animal that you mm-hmm. envisioned when you were high, to a symbol of something? <laughs> because this thing looks packed with meaning. I mean, you've got a fire going in the background. In the foreground, mm-hmm. it feels like almost Eden. It's just this beautiful mm-hmm. lighting. So it's this contrast mm-hmm. between between heaven and hell almost. And then you've got in the foreground where it kind of looks like Eden, you've got this bloody skeleton in flowers. Where you con- mm-hmm. again, contrasting that heaven and hell kind of thing. And then, I mean, it just seems like there's so many different potential symbols in here are is that yeah. okay is that true and if so how do these symbols arise it's because it sounds like uh, you yeah. just started with um, an animal uh in general the symbols um i don't think in the symbol uh i i play with symbols uh, um, and then of course i realize while i'm creating something that uh, as the, the power of the symbol. Uh, that could change, it depend on the culture or the moment, the history moment. Uh, but of course, if I, if I use, um, let's say, a tiger or a, a, or a skeleton or a bird, a white bird, it's a symbol, means something. It's not a totally closed symbol. It's not like a tiger only means, I don't know, Strength, strength, uh, mm-hmm. um, could could mean something else. Could be, but but of course, it kind of could be weird that the tiger means, uh, uh, I don't know, fluffy stuff, or mm-hmm. or I don't know. It's more. Uh, it's a wild animal, powerful, beautiful, savage. So it's probably the symbol of the of the animal is more close to them to that place. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I'm aware about the symbols. So uh, it's another part of the composition. When I get something and I just want to put it because it looks nice, uh, it could be something as simple as that. Okay, I like that. And sometimes the symbol could be a problem. Uh, if the symbol is too strong, so uh, so um, uh, um, take away the attention of the, the, the thing that I want to show. Um, uh, maybe I had to use the texture of that animal, let's say, and change something in order to break the symbol. Uh, I, I do that really often. Um, hmm. but the thing is, like, it, it's because I, I want to show something that it um, make me feel and I can travel around the painting uh, with different meanings and symbols, but the, uh, the symbols and the meaning must be open. Uh, it's, it's never closed. Uh, that's why... Uh, um, the people can interpret in different stuff. Uh, uh, if it's too open, uh, I mean, if it's too close, it's too obvious. I mean, if if I put something, I I don't know. If I if I if I paint someone with a crime, uh, and it's um, only someone crying, and I put and I put I don't know sad. Uh, someone cried. It's too. I don't yeah, have too, too much things to mm-hmm. think. It's uh. So maybe uh. Maybe I I want to express something strong, and maybe I want to make a painting that talking in a way uh, a hard moment of my life. Uh, but maybe I have to use another. There's another way to to show that. Um. I'm going to to get different things that make me feel something and then I put it or maybe it's but it, but it's weird when when I'm sad I try to paint something more console me I mean it I, no sorry no it's not the word it's uh reconfort reconfort could be you're trying oh, to paint something that makes you feel sorry, better sorry. uh yeah so, yeah 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 when I feel when uh for example if you see another uh, painting there's a one with the gorilla with the what? Uh, oh, the gorilla. The gorilla. Oh, d- down. If you're going down, that one. Yeah. Um. Uh. I, I remember pretty well how I got this painting. Um. Uh. I have that background. It's a part of a palace uh, that is in uh, in Chile. 
Uh, it's a really nice background. So uh, I, I wanted to do something with the background. That's all, something simple. Okay. Then, um, then there was a painting of Gustav Klimt with a different woman with a gorilla. Uh, so I like the idea of the gorilla. Uh, I felt like it's kind of, I don't know, kind of, I like the character kind of uh, in, uh, I don't know, the decadence, the, 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 the face of the gorilla. And I imagine a gorilla as uh, some, uh, I have a, my relationship with the apes in general is like, um, uh, I feel a lot of compassion with them. I feel like, uh, uh, they feel a lot like 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 us, uh, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily have the. Um, they cannot go to the psychiatrist. They have a problem. They have right. to just <laughs> yeah. leave. <laughs> so so I, I I don't know. Uh, it's um. Uh, but I, I I knew that I wanna kind of um, opulent thing with a gorilla. Um, but not necessarily like this painting. Maybe it could be actually I have another idea totally different than this one with a gorilla as well. Um, and then it, it, it was during the pandemia to, uh, and it was a moment that I was, uh, I felt a lot of anguish. Uh, it was a really hard time mentally talking. Um, I don't know if it was for the pandemia. I think it could be many things, but uh, I, I was totally broke here in, inside. Um, is, so uh, then I saw the, a painting of, um, Fragonard, uh, that I think one called the letter or something like that. There is, a, a um, it's a girl, uh, writing a letter, no, they uh, put in, um, I think carpet in a, in a tree, uh, some love letter or something like that a heart or something like I, I don't know mm -hmm. um but the position the the composition i don't know something happened for me with that position that made me feel really calm i, I don't know why uh was like oh uh, so so i it was symbolic to me that position so so that's why she has the exactly the same position but the light the the character the model is totally different but she is in the same position of the painting of Fragonard. Um, and she's carved something in the gorilla. And the gorilla, yes, yeah, totally destroyed and cried. And, uh, uh, but everything around is a mess, but it's beautiful, must be beautiful. I like beauty in general. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, and then I got more things, more ideas. I, I, I have a, I just a lot of milk. The idea of the meal that coming from your 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 body, uh, and it's coming from some place actually. It's coming from Akira. Uh, the do, do you know Akira? The, no. uh, the Akira is the is the uh, anime from the eighties. Um, Animal it, it from was, the eighties. Oh, no, an anime, any Japanese oh, anime, anime. Okay, no, I'm not anime. Anime, anime. anime. sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and um, uh, and yeah, and uh, uh, there was a, a a scene of the a big uh, uh, some toys to start to bleed uh, to uh, 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 but bleed um, uh, milk. Uh, it was really strong image. Hmm. Uh, and I saw the movie when I was, I don't know, nine. Um, and I used that feeling, that the feeling that, of, of that thing um, for, for to, um, for, as a symbol of myself. That, that is what I use a lot of milk. Um, and I, and it's because I like white. Sometimes I, I said, okay, I, this part, I need a white. And I could do, there's many things, white things. But I can use milk as well. And mm -hmm. milk could mean different stuff, of course. It's, you can think that milk could be a kind of life things, could be milk, like literal milk. And it's a, it's, it could be semen as well, it could be something more erotic, or it could be uh, sometimes I juice it only because it's white. Mm -hmm. I need white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, there, uh, there, there's many, I, I take a lot of decisions. Some of them are more powerful. Some of them are totally aesthetic. 
um, uh, it's the pen of the painting. Wow. So are you saying that oftentimes you're implying a narrative, but to that you don't actually have a very, you don't always have a specific narrative, but that you're using different imagery and different symbols to imply a narrative so the viewer can kind of create their own conclusion? Yeah, yeah, because it's like, um, not exactly, like, I, I want to show like, a, like to show a window of a dream. It's not like I'm painting my dreams, but it's like, it's like in the dream, you can, you can have a nar narrative, you can, you can, uh, I, I can tell, uh, um, yeah, I can talk about my dream and make kind of narrative stuff, but probably it's impossible to do something totally in order. It's not something that I can complete. It's, there's many symbol stuff that is inside at the same time. Uh, so it's an impression of something, a uh, symbol that, uh, uh, that you can, yeah, I mean, something objectively thinks it's happened. I mean, there's a girl doing something with the gorilla, there's animal, there's an apple falling, there's a bird outside, a, a, a panther uh, in a tree. Uh, but what does it mean? In, or what is the message? It's not something totally clear. Seems like it's clear, but it's not. It seems like you can found it, but maybe don't have it something specific. Uh, it's many feelings in the same time with one male. Yeah, I think that's what I like about it is that it's not, it's not kind of forced down your throat. You, mm -hmm. you kind of left curious. That's a good, I think that's a good thing to look at a painting and not, not necessarily be able to make a solid conclusion, but because then it requires you to come back and back again and again and again. And, oh, and yeah, study yeah, it that's, more. Yeah, and it's more interesting, and it's more, and um, for some people, it's more strong as well. Um, could be a strong in a good way, could be a strong in a bad way. Actually, uh, for example, if you go uh, up, uh, up uh, in the in the paintings, uh, this one, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the second one. Um, the, that one, um, it's more simple, uh, but at the same time have a uh, different interpretations. Uh, uh, I remember was, I have an image, the idea of, uh, of the, of the animal leaking water. Uh, in the beginning, I thought that it's, uh, I like the idea of this, uh, when the cat, the big cat, uh, leaking water. So I wanted to use it in something. But I didn't think necessarily in that position specifically. I got the position for the for a, a watercolor, I think, or a small study. I don't remember. It was watercolor of a John Singer Sargent. Mm -hmm. uh, that the position is kind of similar, and I like the position because make me give me a really nice um, um, curve. So the composition is nice. Uh, and I was working in two different painting uh, and I said, ah, but maybe I can put it together. Oh, work. Okay. Let's see. And then I said, oh, okay, that's true. I need a model, everything. And the model, uh, was my, sorry, was my ex, but look like, um, but, <laughs> but the position, you know, if you are in that position, um, you are young, uh, mm -hmm. it's different. It's difficult to know the age. So many people think it's a little girl because. A, a lot of my paintings have a little girl, mm -hmm. but well, it doesn't matter. It could be a little girl actually. Uh, 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 but uh, but I, I in this case I prefer uh, I prefer to use um, uh, uh, to use my ex uh, in that well in that, in that time my my girlfriend uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a model. Um, um, and then uh, and yeah and, and the painting is. Um, uh, for many people, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a strong one because, yeah, you know, the, it's like uh, the animal with the prey in a way. Uh, but for many people, it's like, uh, hey, uh, they feel more like savage, erotic. For some people, are more like, hey, it's like um, uh, uh, it's going to eat her, could be, uh, or... Um, 
or or for some people, uh, the, the for many people say the the cat is protect her, uh, and for some reason they say, hey, you're a fucking pedo, well, what the fuck, oh, poor girl, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand really what, what the people, uh, some people get offended, but you know, the people get offended for everything. Uh, <laughs> Seriously. It's kind of funny. Uh, but, <laughs> no, but, 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 but you know, the, the reaction is different. Um, of course, the pen of the painting, but, yeah, but, but, but it's interesting to know that uh, for many people it means different stuff. Uh, not uh, infinite uh, possibilities, is, but, but there's many and could be totally different for the different person. And that's interesting because uh, you don't even talk about it if you don't feel something. So uh, that, that's a good thing uh, to... Uh, and, and, and I paint it because when I make the combination just for a coincidence, I felt something. I felt like, oh, wow, this is strong, it could work. Yeah, I do it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know what it makes i'm just one more opinion but you know what it makes me feel like it feels <laughs> symbolic of some sort of an inner aggression being her protector as though this cat is like a symbol of some inner aggression to her that actually keeps <laughs> her protected in some way that's kind of yeah. what, that's what it, that's what it makes me feel like that's yeah, yeah it's interesting I, I, and, and, and 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 yeah and, and i think the painting in a way it's um uh, it's talk in a in a wide way uh um about sex relationship because uh, actually in, in in real life when you uh, when you have a, um, a, a partner and you protect the, the person, but at the same time, maybe it's overprotect or, or maybe you try to control and the, or, or the other person try to control you or whatever. You know, there's problems in the relationships, mm -hmm. uh, but problems, uh, but good things and bad things at the same time. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a balance that, uh, and the same thing with sex as well. Uh, the sex could be um, really raw, really tough. I mean, really could be kind of hardcore. And then uh, that is a kind of, a, no, not aggressive, but let's say, the, yeah, kind of aggression, symbolic aggression uh, in order to be fun for both. And then, uh, and then you get calm and you get color and you are totally not. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can pass for that stage is really fast and it's really normal. I mean, the people do it in general in their lives. Um, so it's a part of the, I don't know if it's contradiction, but it's the, uh, we, in, in the nature, in many things, we, we live with two souls, the aggressive, caring, many things at the same time. So it's interesting to mix each other and show it. Like, yeah literally yeah you've seen. done that successfully <laughs> that's what it feels like it feels like this big scary animal but somehow is showing intimacy at the same time that's really oh yeah and and and, and i think the they are looking both or if you put the detail of the face uh the second uh, pictures um that that one you can see that both us stir us the um, the beer. Yeah. So uh, so we are the one who interrupt their their word. It, it was their word, uh, that symbolic mm -hmm. word, uh, and we are and uh, yeah, and and we are the third one. We are part of that, uh, even if we don't want it. That that's why the that character are stirring. It's not something. Uh, they know that we are the, we are see them, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so maybe we 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 don't have to do it, or maybe who knows? <laughs> that's the benefit of the person. Yeah, that's great. So let's talk about technique a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a couple questions about it. It seems to me that you're actually quite a loose painter. You know, when you look at Instagram and you see your work, it's 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 mm -hmm. condensed down to like two inches, and it's you know, 10, 20 feet in length or height. So they feel really tight. But then when you look at the details, they're very, very painterly. Um, I mean, you got, some, oh, yeah. you get, you get somewhat refined, but most, for the most part, 
you're really, really painterly. So tell me a little bit about your process. One thing that I've noticed, at least I think I'm noticing, is that you're a very indirect painter. You're painting in layers. Is that correct? I paint in layers, yeah. Yeah, maybe uh, you could talk a little bit about um, that. How do you approach that? Um, it, well, I, I always, it, it was more easy for me to paint like that. Uh, my first um, um, reference for paintings, painters, was uh, was two, was Ilya Repin and, and Velasquez. Uh, mm -hmm. So my first approach, especially Velasquez, so so uh, I, I learned to to get the the, the my first brush through my approach to uh, figurative painting with Velasquez, uh, and then of course I changed my and I got my own kind of brush stroke, um, and it's kind of fun to to try to 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 try different brush strokes, what happened, and different kind of layers. Uh, but 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 yeah, I always work with layers. Um, uh, sometimes, but the layers is not a process like I said. Okay, this paint is going to have three layers. Maybe a, one character have two layers, another one have four layers, uh, but a, another part have one layer. Right. It's depend of the. Uh, and I use sometimes I use acrylic as well. Um, it, but only because some some color of acrylic or some kind of brush stroke, I can get it with oil. So I use part of the paint to be acrylic, and but mostly it used to be oil. But I but I Wait, use the you acrylic, don't put acrylic on oil top oil. of oil, do you? No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, 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 like, no, uh, no, no. You had to know when where you use the acrylic, and then the oil uh, never cross each other. Of course, you can put the oil over, but no, 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 the halfway around. Right. So, 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 yeah. Uh, but in general, oil is my main things, uh, my main material. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm looking at because, it. It yeah, seems yeah. like you use sort of almost arbitrary glazes and stuff too. Like there's these really, really loose dynamic glazes right over the fur right through here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And then down I, I here, it, it seems like you're kind of an aggressive painter. Am I wrong? And like you kind of attack the canvas on some level? Yeah, yeah. And in, in one point, I, I attack more the, the, the canvas with more aggressive uh, brush strokes. Then uh, when getting dry or in the middle, uh, I, I model in a more... A fine way. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I use glazes, but in uh, but with glazes I'm really aggressive as well. Sometimes I use glazes uh, really strongly in some places of the painting. Sometimes I put it really thin glaze. It's depending on the what I what I, uh, what I want to do. Uh, but it's it's a kind of game. Uh, I do it. Mm, I if I have a character and said, okay, I think. I want this character a little more warm, so it's going to be a nice clay, nice, nice glaze. And then, but maybe I this part more destructive, or, or, or I want that the lights coming from beneath. So I put that glaze is more dark. Then I I wait in that get dry. Then I sand it. Then I put a little more painting over. That's so many way to wow. to get the same. Uh, there's many way to get the the same figure. It could be like. Pictures of one, I mean, like photograph, uh, like just printed, uh, or 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 could get something as, as, um, like that, but different layer, different structure, and it's never going to be the same. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing about painting, uh, because of course I can create the same world in computer, maybe put it nicely, make the the digital sketch nicely. And that could be the work, and I can just print it uh, or put in a screen, and uh, and it's okay. And could be, and I could be uh, that kind of digital artist, uh, and that could be my job in a way. Um, but the but there's a reason what I'm painting. Uh, I I like the this small detail, the, the the many different brush strokes that I can repeat again. I mean, I can copy that uh, even if I have the same model. And I paint the same painting. I can 
paint exactly the same. For me, it's impossible um, mm. because there's too many decisions that I take in the moment. So it's, it's impossible to do it again. Um, so it's going to take a lot of part of my time, actually. Uh, and that's why I put more attention in to create something that deserve to be painted you know yeah. um because maybe if i don't just produce something uh okay let's do something nice maybe i going to produce a, a, a more of course uh but i'm not going to put the same blob or it's not going to mean the same thing for me that's why i think the painting uh that the retail of the painting is important and then the the, the final object is have something special. It's have something that you can feel in the in the real life. Is uh, and, and and it's really nice. I I, I like it. Hmm. Yeah, this has been fun. So for the viewers, I've been as he's been talking, I've been looking at details of his work, and it's just yeah, they're it's incredible the variety in brushwork and textures that you're getting. And again, the looseness of some of it, man. Th okay. This is right now I'm looking at a pink, uh, tiger mm -hmm. and a blue boar. And mm -hmm. that's a trip, man. What were you smoking when you did this one? How, how, how yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, no, well, well uh, I, you know, I, I love the combination of, uh, that kind of blue with pink. One of my it's gorgeous. Petite. Uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. This head right oh, here. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a, so it's a, beautiful. It's a beautiful. Um, but I felt like the tigers, um, in this case, uh, was they was kind of addicted. They need something of the board that is the pinkness that is inside of them, uh, of it. Uh, it's not that they need to eat them. I feel like they need the pinkness itself and, and the pinkness and pink, pinkness mm -hmm. doesn't mean something specifically it could be whatever you want could be draw could be uh um, i don't know the uh, um, desire of something doesn't matter uh, it's something that but i but i feel like they are totally desperate they are totally addict to to get these magic uh, things uh but the magic things is um it's not fighting it's just it's give them to that thing so it's tricky because uh, they could, uh, could destroy the tiger i think the tiger are the uh, it's not the board that who are suffering more in this painting i think are the, the tiger are totally lost uh in a way uh, <laughs> um they are uh, they are having a good time they are totally euphoric but, but they are kind of drug at this way i think you know yeah. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so you must that, have my feeling about when you must have a huge studio because they do come into focus and oh yeah they yeah. work so well enough. on small need... scale so you must be able to really step back or, i mean are you just wearing a path in the floor going back and forth back and forth when you're working on these giant paintings to be able to see if it's working from a distance, because like I said, they're not that refined up close, at least not everywhere. Some places are, some places are really yeah, yeah, pretty no. tight, but is your studio just ginormous? Uh, it's cute. It's not super huge. It's, uh, it's big enough. Um, I don't need something that huge. I don't need, uh, uh, no, but in general, I have a space enough to go back and see the painting. Uh, I always, my studio are really tall. Uh, it's like a, my studio in Chile have a five, me, a five meters. Uh, it's uh, uh, in feet, could be. Um, wow. It's, uh, it's three, uh, claro, uh, uh, cinco, uh, 15, yes, 15, yeah, uh, yeah something like that, 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally lost with feet. Sorry, that's uh, all right. 16, 15 feet, something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, in general, don't have to be that tall. Could be a little less. Uh, but I need that something tall in general. Uh, and then, yeah, space is like yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I need it. Something. Um, yeah, but but you know, in in Barcelona, for example, I used to rent apartment the uh, old ones, and the old apartment in Barcelona used to be a really big. The living with the with the um, the dining room. So I don't need a dining room uh, at all. So I use as a studio, and okay. I got a, a really small living. And in general, um, um, for example, in Chile, it's more like in United States. Maybe uh, you invite the people in your house. You make, uh, let's say, barbecues or whatever in your house. So you use the house a lot with people. Uh, but in Europe, in general, you don't use too much your house. You you go to a restaurant, a place here, here. So uh, I can use the apartment as a studio. Uh, wow. Or um, the last time I, I got a loft, so it was more more easy to just a studio living. You know, more New York, all New York. I think. Right. <laughs> um, so you live in both uh, Barcelona and Chile. Oh yeah, that time uh, this year, yes. Uh, the last year, I spent more in Barcelona. Uh, and the next year, my, uh, I want to be more in Europe in general. It's because, um, I mean, I don't must do it, but I prefer to be uh, more near the world. Uh, my problem with TV is too far away. Um, but I'm really, if I'm, I'm close with them. I'm really close with my family. Uh, it's, so there's many things that, that, that pull me back to stay here, but there's many things that, uh, but, uh, but I, 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 right now I feel more in home, especially in Spain, uh, it's, it's a place that I, I don't feel like, I, I don't feel like as a, as a foreigner, mm -hmm. uh, a little foreigner, but no, not that much, like to change a city, no, no more than that. So, mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it's a place that I like, I, I like the people and I'm really close to every, everyone. Uh, if you are in the in Spain, you can go to Paris in two hours. Uh, to, yeah, that's so doesn't nice. matter. Uh, yeah. Germany, whatever, everything is more or less close. Uh, United States not that close, but it's uh, it's eight hours, not that much. I mean, uh, I used to take sixteen hour plane for to go to Europe from Chile. Chile is too far away. It's like to stay in in Australia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you one more question before we wrap up. If there was one piece of advice that you wish you had before you started your career, what would it be? Um, uh, piece of advice could be, um, um, or maybe it's something uh, you did have. What's, I mean, let me put it this way. If there's one piece of advice that you would give an aspiring young artist, what would it be? Uh, yeah, I think I was, um, um, uh, well, uh, in general, it's something that, uh, fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, in, um, in, in, in general, it's something that is, well, it's not, uh, it's not that I discovered the wheel or nothing, but, um, not overthinking too much. I think, uh, um, if you have some idea or something, just start to do it. Um, and, and many things you're going to discover many things while you are working. It's not, it, there's no way to plan everything in a, a, before I can plan my life. Uh, I, I mean, I can do something in, be, before, of course I can plan. I don't know. I can save some money. I can, uh, uh, yeah, I can be prepared for bad times, let's say. I think it's, that's, that's good. It's a good advice. Yeah, why not? Um, but that's more or less. And, and I, have, I can have a goals. Yeah. But that's all. I mean, you can do more. And the goals could change, actually. But let's say, yeah, we have a goal. Uh, and then take the goal that you are more close to you and just start to do it immediately. I mean, and, and let's see what's happening. Um, um, but with hope, it's going to happen. Something good is going to happen. Uh, maybe it's a failure, but you're going to learn a lot about that. So it doesn't matter. But of course, um, don't go to to fail. Try to win. <laughs> yeah. Try to do something that works. And then, if you fail, then there's uh, the, if you need to cry, cry. It doesn't matter. It's a, just emotion. 
uh, and then come back and say, okay, I can do it, but uh, try to to really and set up and say, okay, um, what uh, what was the problem? I what, what I did wrong, what I did good, because maybe you did many good things and maybe one mistake or two mistakes or who knows. So try to to do in another way or keep the good things, um, uh, resolve the mistake, and then do it in again. Yeah, so, uh, and eventually you're going to get a good result, whatever you, you are doing. And maybe your, uh, your weight change, uh, change, I mean, many things could happen, but uh, um, we have many dreams uh, and many good ideas, many people, uh, but not too many people uh, put the thinking, do the action to do stuff, and then you you get something and learn. Uh, so so that's really really important, and it's something that is more more a classic advice that you can hear in a in you know in more the uh, uh, um, you know this advice or, no not advice but you know coachings for life or right. Uh, uh, for yeah, get good money and for that anything. kind of things, not just. But art. in general, it's good. Uh, but but it's good to know why. No no no, because uh, I mean you don't have to be guilty if you are feel lazy or you are afraid or whatever. It's normal feelings. You you feel like that just because we are human. We feel like that. It's normal. Um, so, uh, but if you understand why uh, to start something and the action is going to get the better results. Uh, um, uh, and and I think the reason is because uh, your brain can process as much information of all the things that's going to happen in the future is too much information. Mm -hmm. So the only way is step by step. And meanwhile, you are working, you are resolving problems. So you resolve one problem, done another one. Uh, so uh, you can keep your ability of your of your being or your brain or more brains or tools or whatever. Uh, but you can't figure out everything before. It's impossible. You can plan more or less, and then do it. Mm -hmm. uh, then with the experience, you can plan much much better. Of course, right now, uh, I can plan much better a painting than 15 years ago um, <clears throat> because of my experience. Uh, then, But then, uh, for example, if I want to create an sculptor, it's one of my plans, actually. Uh, it's going to be something new, but I can, uh, and actually I was thinking about sculpture for many years and I don't, uh, and I didn't do anything yet, um, but I will, and I will this year. Uh, actually, I have a plan, already I have a concrete plan to do it, so, um, and, and but I don't know how, what is going to be the result. The only way is trying. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see what happens. Uh, maybe it doesn't work, but it's okay. Uh, let's see. But, uh, but at least I'm going to take out of my mind. Right. Uh, it's useful. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, man. It's been awesome to get to know you, Lorca. I really appreciate it. It's been a blast. And as I said no, earlier, wasn't... I'm a huge fan. And uh, it's it's an honor to have you on the show. No, please, uh, for me, it, really, really nice, really nice to meet you. You are really nice. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm really glad, and 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 I, and I hope you can. I mean, I hope could help or could uh, amuse whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ditto. Thanks for tuning in to the Undraped Artist Podcast. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. And if you could, leave a comment or review. That really helps the channel. Please share the show with your friends. And if you're feeling generous, consider a monthly donation at theundrapedartist.com. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.